around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Nothing suits the lively pace of modern life better than Pepsi-Cola. Light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young, drink young. Say Pepsi, please, and get an extra carton of Pepsi-Cola. So go ahead and fix a drink that lets you drink young as you think. Yes, get the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. Mr. Dillon, I ain't gonna do no complaining today, even if the beer's as warm as can be. That won't seem natural, Chester. Maybe not, but I swear to gracious, it seems like this wind has put all the dust in Dodge right in my throat. Yeah, it's pretty dry, all right. Pretty dry? Why, Mr. Dillon, it's a whole lot more than pretty dry. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Dillon, I'll be right back. Look here, Mr. Dillon. A, a lady's bonnet. The wind was carrying it right on down the street. I just did catch it. Oh, it's very pretty. Just what you need, Chester. Oh, I don't want it for myself. I don't see nobody on the street, though, who might have lost it. Yeah, down there in the wagon in front of Jonas's store, see? Oh, yeah, well, I, I'll just carry it on over to her. I'll catch up with you, Mr. Jones. All right, Chester. Excuse me, ma'am. I, I, I brung this bonnet. I... Thank you. I figured it must have been yours with you sitting here without no hat on and all. Yes. Well, I... I loosened it for a minute to set it straight. I, I shouldn't have in this wind. Well, it didn't make no difference. It, it didn't hurt it none. I was thinking for your trouble, Mr... Proudfoot. Chester Proudfoot. Well, I was thinking for your trouble, Mr. Proudfoot. Well, my land, that wasn't no trouble. Leaning down and snagging up a pretty thing like that. Well, I thank you, Mr. Proudfoot. A as a matter of fact, it gives me the chance to kindly pass the time of day with you, ma'am. I think that's real nice. A fellow like me, well, he, he enjoys meeting up with folks. <clears throat> Especially lady folks. Oh, I, I guess we ain't rightly met yet. I, I don't know your name. Well, my name's M. Feeney, Mr. Proudfoot. Well, now, that's nice. That's, that's real nice. I ain't seen you around here before, Miss Feeney. We just come. Oh. Staying on, are you? I can't say for sure, Mr. Proudfoot. Uh, I'd, I'd be pleased if you'd call me Chester. Well, Chester, I, I can't say for sure. We move around a lot, upon me. Oh. Well, you, you stay north at the Dodge house? Land's sake, no. There's a little place north of town away. It must have been vacant a spell the way it looks. Well, now, it'd be nice if you could stay on here. I, uh, maybe I, 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 I could kind of... Or you can sell me. Uh, look out of the way. Oh, I, I'm sorry, sir. Here, l let me help you to load into that wagon. Any... Yeah, just get out of the way now. Wait. <laughs> Oh, this here is Mr. Ain't Pop got no time for foolishness. Come on, now. Yeah. Oh, Pop. Goodbye, Chester. Uh, goodbye, Miss Amy. It was nice talking. It was nice. It sure was nice. Uh, 
So long, Kitty. Thanks for the beer. You're welcome, Matt. Oh, Miss Millen, I'm sorry. What's the matter, Chester? You running away? Running away? Who from? Uh, the girl in the wagon back there. Oh, no such a thing, Miss Millen. Oh, she's a real nice girl. Uh, I, I just want to see Miss Kitty, that's all. All right, Chester, all right. I'll pick up the mail, then. Boy, I clean thought about that, Mr. Dillon. I'll go on down No, there. no, never mind. This seems to be your day for talking to ladies, anyway. Well, I wasn't aiming to put you out. No. I'm going to go down there anyway. You go on, you see, Kitty. Well, I just wanted to ask her something. And she'll probably have an answer. I'll see you later. All right, sir. Bye, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> Hello, Chester. Whiskey? Beer? Oh, uh, no, thank you, Sam. I, I was looking for Miss Kitty. She just went in to check supplies in the back room. Miss Kitty. Coming. Chester here wants to see you. Well, hello, Chester. Well, Miss Kitty, I, I wonder, could, could we sit down somewhere? Well, sure, Chester, we can. You want a drink? Well, mostly I, I just want to talk. Uh, private like. All right, then. Come on back to the office. Sam, bring in a couple of beers, will you? Sure, Miss Kitty. Sit down, Chester. Thank you. All right, now, Chester. What's on your mind? Well, uh, Miss Kitty, I, I, I figure you kindly know about ladies. Oh, sometimes I think I know more about men, Chester. Well, I, I mean, you know what's right and proper. Well, if I did know, I wouldn't get much chance to use it around here. Oh, I thought maybe you might kindly be of the mind to give me some advice, Miss Kitty, but if you ain't... Oh, well, sure, I am, Chester. Uh, oh. There you are. Thanks, Sam. Well, now, what do you want to know? It's about a girl. I figured that. Who is she? Her name is Miss M. Feeney. Are you keeping company with her, Justin? Oh, no, ma'am, I ain't. Well, not yet, I ain't. Anyway, that, that's what I wanted to ask you about. You don't need my permission, Chester. I ain't asking your permission, Miss Kitty. I'm asking if it's proper. Well, why wouldn't it be? Well, see, I, I just seen her there, sitting in a wagon outside of Mr. Jones' store. Did you talk to her? Well, yes, ma'am, I, I, I did. Did she talk to you? Oh, yes, Miss Kitty, she did, and just as nice. Well, then what's your problem? Well, I can't make up my mind if it'd be proper to, to, to call on her. See, just, just talking to her like that that well, one time. Did she tell you not to? Oh, no, 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 she didn't, but she didn't hardly have time to. Her pa come out, and they drove off in an awful big hurry. Oh, I don't think I'd worry about it being proper, Chester. I, I'd worry about her pa. Oh, I ain't worried none about him. Well, then go see her, Chester, for heaven's sakes. You, you think that'd work out all right, Miss Kitty? Well, I don't know how it'll work out, Chester, but you won't find out by staying away. <laughs> that, that's a fact, ain't it, Miss Kitty? That's a fact, Chester. Well, then, by Jing, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it as soon as I can get me a haircut. Her name must be Delilah. How's that? Oh, never mind, Chester. But if she's able to get your haircut, I'm all for her. Maybe she'll be real good for you. You know, Miss Kitty, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Things packed up now, Em. We want to be ready as soon as Ruth comes. I'm doing it, Paul. He's likely to come in any night now. Yes, Paul. I wish we could stay on here for a spell. Well, we can't. I know we can't. But it ain't easy moving here, moving on. A woman likes to stay a spell. Get to know folks. When you get to California, we'll stay. Now, go on now, girl. Get things together. Yes, Paul. Could that be? Somebody coming? Yeah. I'll go send him on his way. Well, I, 
I think that... Well, yes, it is. It's Mr. Proudfoot. You know him? Well, you've seen him too, Pa. He's the man I talked to in Dodge. What's he doing out here? I think he... I think he's come to call, Pa. To call? On you? He's a real nice man. Well, I don't care how nice he is. Ain't nobody can be nosing around here when Roop comes in. You know that. Sure, Pa, I know, but... I'll send him home before nightfall. It can't hurt none. Uh, Please, Pa. Uh, uh. I don't hardly get cold on. Hardly at all. Well... All right, Em, but you get him out of here before dusk now. Sure, Pa. Sure, I will. All right. Why, hello, Mr. Proudfoot. How do, Miss Em? I, I come to call, if that's all right with you. It's fine, Chester. It's just fine. Would you like to step into the house? Well, I declare that'd be nice, Miss Em. Just real nice. Perhaps I could offer you a cup of coffee? Yes, ma'am, you sure could. <laughs> Be mighty nice. Matt, I thought Chester never wanted to miss one of your weekly gun inspections. Well, he, uh... Usually doesn't, Doc. Yeah? What's the matter? He's sick or something? No, no. He's, <laughs> he's gone calling. Calling? Uh, Chester? That's right. He's up north someplace calling on a lady. He must have been really smitten to miss his chore with a gun. <laughs> you know what, Doc? He even went to Kitty for advice. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll say this for him. <laughs> he went to the right person. <laughs> Ah, that doesn't... I don't think you'd better tell him that you were able to do without him. It hurt his feelings. You know, his feelings aren't the only thing that's likely to get hurt if he keeps kiting around all over the countryside. Well, oh, hello there, Doc. Mr. Dillon? Uh, Chester. Glad you showed up, Chester. <laughs> I tell you now, it is a pretty day. There ain't many pretty days in Kansas as a rule, but this is sure one of them. <laughs> yes, well, that's what it always seems when a man is courting, Chester. Well, now, Doc, I, I wouldn't exactly say I was courting. Oh, well, you're, um, you're keeping company? He's only known her for three days, Doc. Well, it doesn't matter how long a man knows a girl. Oh, no, but it's how well. Uh, how well do you know this one, Chester? Well enough to know that she's a real nice lady. Oh, what does she think of you? She thinks enough of me, so she claims she'll always have a pot of coffee on the stove for me. Uh, tell me something, Chester. You you figure that you're uh, going to be calling many more times in the daytime? Hmm? Well, see, Mr. Dillon, it's just that her pa don't like her keeping company in the nighttime. Oh. oh her, her pa's a smart man. Uh, but if there's anything special you want me to do... I could sure do it after sundown. Though. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, no I, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind a bit. Indeed, I wouldn't. Thank you very much, Chester. That's very kind of you. <clears throat> well, did these wanted circlers come in today, Mr. Dillon? Well, yeah, I, I went down uh, and picked them well, up. Well, I thought you always took care of the mail, Chester. Well, see, Doc, I wasn't here when it come in. Hey, you see what I mean, Doc? Yeah, I see well, it don't seem like none of these fellows on these circulars is any too important, would it? Oh. Well, what's the matter? Oh, my goodness. Well, well what's the matter, Chester? Well, I... 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 Well, but stop standing there like a stricken calf and tell us what ails you. I... Well, it, it's just... Army poster Here, let me see here. it. An army deserter? Yes, sir. Roop Feeney. Oh, well, do you know him? No, sir, Mr. Dillon, I don't know him. Well, then what's eating you? I think I know his pa and his sister. Oh, this new girl of yours, her name Feeney? Yes, sir, it is. Well, now, man, it's a, no wonder he's upset. It isn't easy to find out that your girl's family has a, a wanted man in it. Now, who's it, Chester? That's Rube Feeney. He isn't out there now, is he, Chester? 
No, sir, he ain't out there. Well, don't you worry. No, sir, don't you worry, Chester. Matt isn't going to make you arrest your girl. Oh, Doc, it ain't that. Well, well come on, Chester. Well, what's the matter? Well, the matter is, Mr. Jones, I don't rightly know what to do. What do you mean? Why, there's this nice, fine lady, Miss Dillon, and her brother, and, and he's her little brother, too. He's went and got himself in trouble like that. Well, Chester, you don't have to tell her about it. No, sir. Well, what's the matter, then? Well, I just don't want her to have no bad feelings, that's all. Well, you can't help it. If her brother deserted, it is... It won't be your fault if she has bad feelings. Yes, Doc, it will. There just ain't no way for me to help it because I... I, I got to tell you something, Mr. Dillon. What? You got to tell me what, Chester? Come on, speak up. What? Well, that they're waiting for Rupe Feeney to come meet him there. Oh. What's that supposed to be? I don't know just when, Mr. Dillon. And... That Miss M. Yeah, I know, I know. She just said they was waiting for her brother any time now. I, I don't think she knowed nothing was wrong, though. All right. Guess we'd uh, better get out there. Uh, you don't have to come, Chester. Thank you, Miss Dillon, but I reckon a man has to meet up with the way things are. I'll get the horses. Athlete's foot roots, like garden weed roots, grow below the surface. You've got to penetrate the surface to root it out. And that's how NP27 treatment works to root out athlete's foot. NP27 penetrates below skin surface, where other remedies can't reach, even into toenails. NP27 liquid stops itch, relieves pain, promotes healthy tissue. NP27 powder guards against new infection, keeps feet healthy dry. NP27 roots out athlete's foot, or your druggist will refund your money. He must have came just after I left, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, they must have packed up in a hurry. That house was sure cleaned out. Well, I guess I wasn't thinking too good when I was there drinking coffee and all. Yeah. See, what I mean is they was packed to leave all the time. Things in barrels and cases instead of scattered around the room. Now, they couldn't have got too far, Chester. Don't worry about it. Mr. Dillon, I ain't worried about not catching them. I'm worried about when we do. Mr. Dillon, yonder's a wagon. Yeah, I see it. All right, come on. Stop the wagon. Why, Chester. Hello, Miss Sam. Your name Feeney? It is. I'm looking for your son, Rupe. He's in the army. No, he isn't. Is that his horse tied to the wagon? You don't see him, do you? No, I don't see him, but I think I would see him if I pulled that canvas off the wagon bed. You stay away from my way. I wouldn't want any trouble, Mr. Feeney, but I can cause trouble if I have to, and I'll tell your son to come out. Now, you are... Listen to me. There's no use for any killing, but if I have to shoot, I will. Now, tell him to come out. No. No, I don't want no killing. Come on, Roop. Get up. Get up, Roop. We ain't gonna make it. I guess I should have known we never would. We'd have made it if you'd let me keep my gun, Pa. Your Pa's a wise man. Now, uh, maybe they won't shoot you. All right, come on, get on. Uh, Miss Sam? I don't think you have anything to say to me, Mr. Proudfoot. Oh, yes, ma'am, I do. I thought you was coming to see me just like any man come and call him. I didn't think you were just spying on my brother. Miss Sam, I swear to goodness. I, I know I ain't a pretty woman or a proud woman. But I thought this one time, just this one time. Can we go now, Pa? Yes, we might as well go on. Then go now, Pa. 
Go now. Oh, all right, Em. Rube. I should have had the gun, Pa. No. No, this is the right way. Now, you stay alive, boy. Come on. She wouldn't even say me a proper goodbye. I'm sorry, Chester. Well, I reckon she couldn't help them bad feelings. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. It ain't always easy to be a lawman. No, not always. Help, come on. Let's get the prisoner back to Dodge. Maybe you're about to hit the jackpot. Maybe you're on the point of inheriting half a million or finding oil. Chances are, though, that none of these lovely things will happen. Chances are, if you want a bonanza in the future, you'll have to save it up. Now, there are a number of ways to do that. Some people stuff their mattresses, stash their cash behind a loose brick in the fireplace, or slip it under a floorboard. None of these methods make sense because money so stored isn't making a cent for you. Not only that, it may get lost or stolen. Wouldn't you rather your savings made more money for you? Wouldn't you rather have them theft-proof, loss-proof in every way? Of course you would. And you can the United States Savings Bond way. Through the payroll savings plan where you work or the bond-a-month plan where you bank, $3 will get you 4 on maturity every time. Nicest thing of all, it's literally impossible to lose your money. If baby shreds your bonds into confetti and drops them out the window, you can recover your cash plus interest in United States Savings Bonds. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, John Daner, and James Musser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.